So welcome. This is the presentation on our Masters of Science in Athletic Training program. Um, my name is Stephen Kellogg, and I am the Senior Enrollment Counselor for the Graduate Professional Studies Division. I help individuals from the point of inquiry all the way to the point of orientation um, and kind of helping them make sure they turn in their documents and answer any questions about financial aid or the application process. Tonight, we have some experts on the call tonight, our presentation, um, Dr. Chris Fieselman and Dr. Jess Elder Nye. They are both um, faculty members in the program and they are going to be able to help us kind of um, talk more about the program and kind of go through it. I will let them both introduce themselves um, as we start here. Thanks, Stephen. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, as Stephen said, my name is uh, Dr. Christopher Wieselman. I am the program director. Um, I've actually been at Grandview. This is my sixth year. Uh, I was originally hired to start the Masters of Athletic Training, so it's been a fun process to see it come to uh, fruition. And we're really excited about uh, some of the unique things that we're going to talk about tonight. I'm Dr. Jess Edler Nye, and I started four years ago at Grandview, and I'm the clinical education coordinator um, and teach about half the classes in the program. So I look forward to sharing some information with you all. Perfect. Like I said, you're going to get really lucky tonight. We have uh, the people who are the brains, the bronze, and the wit behind this program. <laughs> and I'm here just to support them. So they're going to provide a lot of great extra content. So if you have any questions, we'll make sure you get that information at the end of the presentation. Um, but we're going to hop on to the next slide. As you can tell, we have two faculty members who teach most of those classes, and those class sizes range. I'm going to speculate as small as you know four or five to about fifteen, um, and they'll be able to add more to that um, if um, they wanted to jump in. You know, we have learning opportunities in multiple settings, including high school, colleges, healthcare providers, and clinics. Um, one of the best things about our program is our newly remodeled space. So if you ever had a chance to visit campus, you know, you would be able to see the facility that we take pride in. Um, we take so much pride in it. Our athletics teams actually use this space to, you know, get ready and prepare during their trainings or practices. Um, and it's uh, equipped with all the latest technology and equipment. And then, like I said, our experienced faculty members that are truly devoted to your success as an athletic trainer in the future. Uh, did Dr. Wieselman or Dr. Adler Nye wanted to uh, add anything? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate that introduction there. Um, yeah, we're really excited about it. Like I said, we uh, when I came to Grandview and was uh, conceptualizing this program, we, we tried to think about what a space would look like that would really enhance the educational opportunities that we had. Uh, and, you know, thinking about how we connected both the athletics to the academics and allowed for students to be able to, to go in and practice the athletic training skills uh, right away in a laboratory setting. Um, that they'll actually use for some of their clinical rotations was was a part of our conversation and it it was a part of the remodel so we're really happy with the space that we have and the space that's provided for us and being able to to offer that for our students one of the other things that's really great is it's a dedicated classroom uh, so our students um, all have access to the classroom to do laboratories or to come in and study with uh, their classmates or on their own so they can get in and 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 review the material and prepare for tests and, you know, just have that, that full experience of a, a, a dedicated space uh, for student education. Awesome. Did you want to add anything, um, Jess? I think uh, Chris covered it. Perfect. We're going to move on to the next slide and it is what to expect. So I'm gonna pass this off to one of the faculty members because this is their expertise and space of understanding. Um, I do know some about it, but most of the time I reach out to Chris or Jess to help just because once again, they are the experts. They are the faculty members who understand the program through and through, so. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll lead off. Uh, with their, our, our program was designed as a 55 credit program and it is, um, uh, somewhat unique in the fact that we don't actually have significant summer requirements and we wanted to keep the program as affordable as as possible like we mentioned or like Stephen mentioned in the beginning of this 
um, presentation. And that's really important. And it's one of the things that, that we value is understanding that uh, we need to be an affordable program that also provides students with a great uh, educational experience. So our program is 55 credits. It's primarily during the semesters. There are two times for clinical rotations and for some advanced um, classroom experiences that we, we bring students back on campus a little bit early in August uh, or they go out to clinical sites early in August. But other than that, they have the summers to work or to do other internships um, and really advance advance themselves and support themselves and advance their their careers or their future careers. Uh, in the first year, we focus on in-person learning. So all of our all of our classes are in the classroom setting. Um, we actually spend the majority of the time the first semester on uh, evaluation of injuries as well as emergency care in um, in athletics. So really focusing in on how how that you you start the process. You know, what a lot of people think of is starting the process and athletic training is seeing a, seeing a student or I mean, seeing a patient or an athlete that gets hurt and doing the evaluation, doing the emergency care, and then taking them on into um, what we have our second semester, which is our focus on the interventions. So how do you treat somebody that's in the inflammatory phase when they have an initial injury? So a lot of our second semester then is based on the progress that the students go. So they get a lot of anatomy and evaluation skills and handling emergency situations in the first semester. And that transmits directly to the second semester, which is our intervention courses. So looking at different modalities such as electric stem, ultrasound, um, we do some soft tissue mobilization techniques like cupping uh, or um, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. Those are you know, things that we're, we, help our students learn so that they can apply it again right into the clinical setting. And we also have our research methods course that happens in the second semester. And that really ties again, our course room back to our clinical experience. Uh, that's one of the things that you'll see throughout our program is this focus on taking classroom knowledge and really um, using it in that clinical setting. Uh, so, and I'll let uh, Dr. Edler Nye, who is our clinical coordinator, talk about the first year clinical experiences. Yeah, so the in the first year, our students do four different clinical rotations. They last from about seven to eight weeks, and we really try and get students a variety of experiences within the Des Moines Metro. So um, pretty much every student will get at least one rotation on our own campus. This year, every student had at least two rotations on campus. Um, and then we use a variety of high schools within the Des Moines Metro. So we use the Des Moines Public School System and then some of the more uh, suburban schools um, kind of on the outside of Des Moines or the suburb suburbs of Des Moines. And our students go out to clinical sites um, three to four days a week and they spend anywhere from two hours to six or seven, depending on the day, um, there for the day and get a variety of experiences throughout the week and then over the course of the first year. Um, with the goal of getting somewhere around 200 hours each semester, and um, at least 100 patient encounters, but the majority of the time our students are doing somewhere between 150 and 200 patient encounters every semester. So there's a ton of hands-on focus, and we really try and emphasize that with our preceptors who are supervising and helping to teach in the clinical environment um, to make sure that students get that variety of experiences. One of the other um, sites that we use is with our program medical director in a concussion clinic. So every student spends a couple weeks in his clinic. He also has an athletic trainer that works with him and kind of sees the physician side of sports medicine. Um, and he does a really good job, I think, of tying in evidence-based practice. He gives our students a ton of articles to look at um, and then have conversations about and, and kind of see where he's coming from and, and his perspective on that. And we also typically have him come into the classroom and do a, at least one guest lecture every year. That's awesome. It's great to hear. Um, so I don't know much about what is happening, but are they, are, um, when it comes to uh, athletic training, are they providing like different levels? So as they progress through their clinical experience, do they get more advanced in the type of, you know, pre-work that they are providing or um, pre-training, or is it all kind of just like depending on the clinical site and so on? Um, 
really it's based on where they're at in the curriculum. So when a student starts going to their clinical site in the fall semester, as uh, Dr. Beeson mentioned early on, we bring students in a couple weeks early because we do a, like anatomy intensive and then a taping and bracing course for the two weeks prior to the fall semester. So that when students start going to clinical in their first semester, they can apply skills day one. Um, so initially what we're having students do in those first few weeks is really trying to get their kind of get their feet wet on what it looks like. And then also applying some of those taping or bracing techniques that we taught in the first semester or in that kind of two week class. And then once we get into the evaluation classes, then we really encourage students to start taking a patient history and asking questions about um, injuries and evaluations. And then the further they get into that, the more they can start to apply those skills. And it just kind of builds every semester. Um, So the emphasis in the spring semester is really honing in on the evaluation, but then starting to layer in that treatment planning aspect and and starting the the rehab piece. And then in the second year, we add even more layers to that. Perfect. Thank you for evaluating, um, if not evaluating, elaborating on that. Words are hard at six o'clock at night. <laughs> uh, going on to the next slide, as uh, we had mentioned earlier, this is a two-year program. So our, our second year is very unique in a lot of aspects. And um, I actually take pride in this portion of it because I think it's fascinating that we develop this so that you're able actually to you know, find a clinical site or a, an internship site that really suits your needs as a long-term athletic trainer. Um, I'm going to, again, pass this on to the faculty team just because this is their space and they do a great job. So if one of you wanted to take the lead on this slide as well, that'd be helpful. Yeah, I can start. Um, with our second year, uh, what we designed uh, was really an immersive experience that that showed what a full year of athletic training would look like. Um, one of the things that I, I noticed in my um, experience working in athletic training as well as teaching in athletic training is that the first year out of school is, is, is fairly difficult. And a lot of students, when they're making that transition to the professional world, um, they need mentoring during that first year. So we want to design the curriculum so that we could we could shorten that transition or that that phase of uh, as much as possible and really get our students to the point where they're doing autonomous care as much as possible, you know, as much as as, as possible with supervision, um, obviously. But working to that point where they are and can function, you know, by themselves and they can they can handle that amount of having the applying the knowledge and the skills that they're learning throughout the program in that practical setting. So we designed our second year clinical immersion to to be that that year of transition essentially. Um, again, I'll start with the coursework and then I'll I'll pass this on to uh, Dr. Edler Nye to talk about the clinical experiences. But for the the coursework that we focused in on, we do an emer- uh, administration course and a general medical course, and then we have our clinical ed- education course, which is where um, the actual clinical experiences are tied back into. In that administration and general medical courses, those are problem-based courses where we give students challenges that they have throughout the semester. They are online courses and they're taught both um, synchronously and asynchronously. So there's sometimes some meeting times that are associated with the courses so that we can reconnect with students because uh, we know that that's a really important part of the learning piece is coming back together as a group and uh, reviewing and discussing the material, but also allowing them again some some points of autonomous practice where they're they're designing what they would do for a patient with a general medical condition, or they're actually looking at how do you implement a a policy that they might be learning about it in the administration course in an actual clinical experience. You know, so they're actually taking what they're doing in the clinic and then they're they're reviewing that and making it a part of their educational experience in the online portion. In the second semester, then we move on to a psychosocial course. Um, Again, we have another clinical education course. And we have our seminar, which is really a a prep course, again, to review all the material that we've we've gone through so far. And we do kind of a mix of asynchronous and synchronous online learning during during those courses to really make sure that our students have all the knowledge and skills that they need um, to not only pass the board of certification uh, exam, but also to practice in the field. So, and then 
like I said, I'll, I'll let uh, Dr. Edler and I take the clinical education and talk about that. Yeah, so clinical education in the second year is um, really focused on that day-to-day, week-to-week experience for athletic training. And one of my favorite parts of this is that we've designed it so that you can go anywhere in the country you would like to go um, for that year. Or if you're from Iowa, want to stay in the area, you're also welcome to do that. Um, Originally, when we first launched, launched the program, this was one semester, and we realized that we put some restrictions on it, so that made it hard for students to go elsewhere. Um, so we went through a change to do that uh, because we felt like it was really important to give students uh, the opportunity to find a clinical site that was going to be a really good fit for them, and then also make it a, a financially feasible decision. So as you can see listed on this slide, We've currently got rotations within Iowa, Illinois, New York, and Tennessee, and we're working on contracts in Arizona, California, Florida, and actually we can add Wisconsin to that list as of um, the last couple of weeks. So kind of the way that process works is we start having conversations about this pretty early on in the first year so that we can get through um, the contract part of setting up these rotations. But Basically, the student reaches out to athletic trainers and says, hey, I'm really interested in in learning from you and and getting experience in this site. And then we kind of go through the steps and make sure it's going to be a good fit for the student and then work through the affiliation agreement on the backside um, to ensure the student is protected. Um, Those experiences are really intended, like I said, to be the day to day, week to week. But we also want the students to get kind of the full continuity of patient care where you may see that initial injury, but then you're there pretty much every day to work with that patient and see them from initial injury to full return to activity. And we think that's really important. The other piece that I think is really essential in this immersive experience is being there really consistently so that you can develop relationships with coaches, you know, parents, if it's a high school setting, um, other people within that site, physicians, other healthcare providers, so that you get those one-on-one interactions with them related to patient care. So that when you do enter a job after graduation, uh, you feel prepared to um, manage the day-to-day expectations of an athletic training facility. And that that's really the way we've developed the immersive experience. Um, we've got some pretty clearly articulated goals and things that we want you to get out of that. Um, and students are doing somewhere between 30 and 40 hours a week. And again, we set that patient encounter benchmark at, at right around a hundred, but instead of uh, it being kind of basic skill level, we really want it to be clinical decision-making related to patient patient care. And so far, students are exceeding expectations. And from the feedback we're getting, this is some of their favorite part of the program. So That is awesome. It sounds, like I said, it's my favorite part to talk about uh, prospective students with, especially for the aspect that maybe, you know, Des Moines was a great fit for one year, but then you want to be able to go back home closer to family, friends, and loved ones. Or, you know, as a younger or transitioning adult, maybe you want to try something different. So um, that that's what is very cool about our program. And truly, it's designed for you and mine. Um, it's really easy to tell students to say, sorry, you're going to stay here in, in central Iowa for another year and then figure out your life after that point. But this definitely helps you kind of figure out, you know, what part of athletic training you truly like and how we can, as an institution, truly, you know, equip, empower, and engage you in your success in the future. So the next thing we're going to talk about is kind of the more mundane, boring aspects of the presentation, because it's everything you need to know to be prepared to either apply for our program or enroll in our program. So we do have program prerequisite courses. So there are some things that, you know, in order to make a great athletic trainer or be successful in our coursework, we just have several courses that really are just kind of like basic foundation courses to help you. So some of these courses, depending on the major at an undergrad, you might have already, you know, met or required. Um, If not, you know, you could work with our faculty members or myself to see how we can, you know, get these courses for you um, before you apply or um, at the time of application. So very basic, you know, human anatomy and physiology, uh, nutrition, sports nutrition, biomechanics, kinesiology or physics, exercise physiology, statistics, chemistry and biology. Now I do know that we have, you know, 
substitute some courses sometimes depending on you know how closely related they are um, but that is definitely a an um individual or per case basis is it's not something we do for everybody but if you maybe have taken something very similar to a nutrition class or a sports nutrition it was just called something different because your institution you know called it something different you know it doesn't help or it doesn't hurt to have us look at a syllabus and a course description to have that same with statistics um you know there's a couple different forms of statistics out there you know we can always take a look at those as well um, do the faculty want to add anything about those program prereqs? Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the big things that we want is just students to come in with a foundation of anatomy and understanding, um, you know, the, the basics of human motion um, so that we can build on that and we can expand it. Uh, and that's what these courses are designed to do is really, you know, it's not to inhibit students from getting into the program, but it's really to make sure that, that they have the base essential knowledge so that we can progress them uh, into the field of athletic training. So um, that's, as Stephen mentioned, you know, we're, we're open to looking at syllabi and to seeing if there is a course that is similar. Uh, as long as the content is there, um, that's the most important part uh, for our program. Perfect, thank you. Um, the next slide we're gonna talk about is kind of the admissions requirement. So there's kind of two steps involved or kind of two different formats. Um, not, um, you could apply through the ATCAS system, which is kind of that universal database for all athletic training programs at the graduate level. Um, and they're all going to have very similar, you know, institution to institution, similar admissions requirements. So the, the database kind of streams like it. I do want to let you know that if you apply through ATCAS, there is a fee associated with it both times. I think the first time is like $80 and then the second time is like $40. If you apply directly to Grandview, we have no application fee. So if you want to save, you know, 40 to 80 bucks, you know, feel free to reach out to us and apply directly through our website. It doesn't change the required documents. We're going to ask for all the same things. It just kind of helps you when you're applying. Um, the ATCAS system is great if you plan on applying for multiple institutions kind of all following the same structure. So very basic, you know, we do require an application for admissions. Um, 25 hours of observation uh, hours, and that has to be with a direct um, board certified athletic trainer. Now, COVID has um, caused some restriction in that, so there is some leeway that can be had within there, but we do really encourage that you have those option based observation hours under an athletic trainer because it is a different industry in a different field. Some people think that, you know, they want to be an athletic trainer. Reality, they want to be a physical therapist or, you know, something along those lines or work in sports management or sport medicine in a different aspect. So I thought that those observation hours truly help you kind of see the ins and the outs of that. Um, and you get a sense of what it means to be an athletic trainer. Uh, technical standards, it's really just an agreement that you are able to, you know, meet certain standards because you're going to be working on your hands, you're, you're going to be standing, kneeling, you know, lifting things, and then current CPR and ADA certification. But once again, you're going to be in clinical sites, you're going to be on the fields in certain aspects, so you have to be able to perform basic first aid um, when it comes to that, and you have to be able to do it properly. Any additional information? Oh, no, I think they, yeah, you covered it well, so. Perfect, thank you. This is where I, I thrive because this is what the stuff I know. <laughs> uh, the next thing is the supplemental item. So really this is, once again, kind of goes back to part of that application. So we do require a statement of purpose. And when that with that statement of purpose, there are three questions we are looking for you to answer. And that is, you know, what are your short-term and long-term career goals? How can our athletic training program help you achieve those goals? What skills and experience are you going to contribute? So if you've, you know, have been a student intern in an athletic department, and you observed, you know, an athletic trainer for many, many hours, those are all skills and experience you're going to bring to our program. And we want to hear that. And then the expectation that you have for the program, you know, this um, application on this statement of purpose is really good for two reasons. You know, you get a sense of what our institute, what you're bringing to the institution, and 
you also get to evaluate, you know, as you're kind of writing this, is our institution a good fit for you? You know, you're going to be able to review the curriculum, you know, review the faculty and, and kind of see like, are they going to work? At the same time, our faculty are, you know, kind of reviewing, you know, can you handle college level work? At the same time, will our program kind of help you achieve the goals that you want or, you know, achieve those experiences and the results? Will you be a good fit? Because, you know, we want to make sure that we are helping you succeed long term. Sometimes, you know, you get into a program and it's just not going to work out. And it's sometimes better to catch those right away because maybe you were looking more for some sport medicine, medicine or physical therapy type of route where we can help you initially through that discussion. Um, we also look for a resume. That resume is going to be a very general resume. You might see it on our website as a professional resume or a graduate resume. It all means the same thing. It's a resume you would use for apply for a job. Any special things that you have, maybe you've done some research or something, you can also include that in there as well. And then two letters of recommendations. Now, this is very different if you're applying through Grandview site. It's more of a like a link type of uh, recommendation. If you do have letters, kind of those traditional letters, we accept those as well. You would just need to have them saved as a PDF um, directly from your reference and then have them emailed to myself or Dr. Wieselman uh, for your file. And then last and but not least, kind of the attributes for success. Um, this really goes back to the faculty members and what they value um, in the uh, program and why they take pride in being faculty members at an institution like Grandview. So I don't want to, you know, steal their thunder on this slide and I'll let them kind of, you know, the attributes for success here. Yeah, actually, Stephen, could you back up a slide? Yep, I can. Perfect. Um, I'm going to talk about this just really quick. So a couple of the things that we're really looking for, as Stephen said, is fit into the program. So we're really interested here about you and your story and how you got to athletic training, um, because we think that's an important part of um, what you bring to the field, what you bring to the careers, as well as what you're going to bring to the graduate program. So we want to we want to hear about you. We want to hear about your passions, um, how you got interested in athletic training and what drives you um, to, to complete this uh, degree. So as well as we want to we want to hear, you know, what your expectations of the program are, um, our our program is, is unique, you know, with one year kind of in person and one year more um, dedicated to on the online immersion experience. It's, it's a unique program and it's not going to be a, a perfect fit for every student. And so we want to make sure that, you know, that you're that you understand what our program is all about, as well as, you know, what the benefits are and make sure that it is going to be the best fit for you. Um, and then you can go to the next one. Um, so a little bit about uh, about us, uh, Dr. Edler and I and I both got into education for athletic training, starting from a passion for athletic training and sports medicine. And that's really where we were driven from. Um, but we made this transition into the educational setting because we wanted to be there for the next generation to help move athletic training as a profession forward, as well as mentor and support future athletic trainers. And that is one of the things that we both take a lot of pride in is, is mentoring students and walking with students as they, as they make this journey or this first step in their journey to be an athletic trainer. We want them to be their best self. And I think that that's a really, really important part of our program is developing a mentoring relationship and understanding that you are going to make mistakes and things are going to be difficult. And we're going to be there with you through that process as you learn this new, these new skills and this new information. And you develop not only the knowledge of athletic training and how to apply it to your patient population, but also how do you, how do you deal with adversity? How do, you, how, how do you react when things are challenging, when you're in that, that long 12-hour day or that tournament that just doesn't seem like it'll ever end? And, you know, and you still have an emergency situation, you know, how do you respond to those things? And how do you stay motivated in a, in a profession that doesn't always, isn't always an eight to five, you know, and I think that's a really big part of um, success in our program as well as not only developing the, the specific knowledge and skills, but also developing re resiliency and making sure that, that you're able to respond to those challenges that we have, you know, throughout, uh, throughout our careers. 
Um, our program then is based on really trying to prepare you for that. We do a lot of project-based learning. We do a lot of um, scenario-based learning. We do a lot of case studies and trying to make sure that our students are getting the that simulated experience in the classroom uh, so that they're prepared for the actual experience when they go out. Um, as we've been going through this, you've been seeing pictures of, of different students in our program. Um, you saw students doing CPR, you saw students spine boarding um, in the classroom. Uh, you, saw, you just saw one of our first graduates presenting some research that he did. And, and now you see our first class graduating in this, in this current slide. And it's something that we, we take a lot of pride in is that our students' growth and their development through all of those different stages. And I think that's a, that's a really important part. We understand that you're making a commitment to our program. You're coming for two years to be a part of Grandview's Masters of Science in Athletic Training. Um, but you're not just becoming a part of the program for two years. You're becoming a part of the program for your career. You're becoming a part of our, our network of athletic trainers that are, that are out practicing in the field and really doing great and amazing things. I usually tell students that um, I'm so proud of the alumni that I've worked with. I've been teaching in athletic training for over 17 years now. And I have students that, that you know, have been practicing now for almost two decades, which probably makes me older than what I want to admit. But it's one of those things that is really, really important to me is that, you know, I've tried to stay in contact with them and support them when they make, you know, changes in the profession or they're going to a new career. Or as uh, we've had a couple of students that are now pursuing PhDs um, or have completed PhDs. Uh, those are those are the things that that continue to make me want to be a part of education and continue to make me proud to be an educator is seeing students not only succeed in the classroom, not only succeed in their clinical rotation, but succeed in their future careers. And I take a lot of pride in that. And I think one of the other things that we, we also really value and take a lot of pride in is our communication and professionalism. So we're going to help develop not only your skills in that, but we're also going to continue um, to make sure that we communicate to you not only when you first apply to the program as we're trying to get you in the door, but while you're here and then after you leave. So it's not going to be a thing where you're, you drop an email and you just wonder if a faculty member is going to get back to you. We're going to get back to you and we're going to support you throughout um, not only your process here, as I said, but your process as an alumni, as a future athletic trainer and throughout your careers. Thanks, Chris. And this is why we know <laughs> I leave this slide to you guys, because you do such a great job because that passion, you know, we as I mentioned, we live our mission statement here at Grandview. You know, we live the equip, engage, and the empower our students, you know, not just while they're here as students, but all the way through their alumni or through their career. Um, and Dr. Wieselman and Dr. Adler and I do a great job with that. Uh, Jess, did you want to add anything to this slide um, for anything left? I don't think so. I think Chris pretty much covered it, so I'm good. Yeah, it's really hard. I just to like follow. that picture. I can't I can't stop smiling because I think that picture is awesome. After yeah, anyways, Todd can edit that part out. But after the last couple of weeks, it's nice to see that picture. That's awesome. Like I said, it's really hard to follow up Chris Wieselman, um, the one and the only <laughs> <laughs> the one out there. Um I don't want to age myself, but when you said two decades worth of a career, it makes me feel really, really young. <laughs> so thank you. Um well, thank you for participating tonight in our presentation. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, I, we will send out a follow-up email with all this information and um, myself and the faculty's email address as well. Once again, we are here to help you and guide you through this process. We have helped students kind of just understand athletic training. And if we're not a good fit, we get that. We want to make sure that you are successful in your career long-term and that sometimes, you know, is going with a different institution. So we are really here to help you, you know, find that, you know, find your passion and be able to support you. Thank you and have a great night.